Talk Talk. I'm Crystal. So today we're going to talk about some women's stuff, but men don't go away because this involves you. You know the beauty of women? The beauty is that we transform. You know, we transcend, we morph. We go from blooming, budding, blooming to perhaps withering or perhaps going into becoming some full-bodied wine. It's just so interesting and intricate as women, especially if you're in tune with your body. So today we're going to talk about this whole transformation process in our lives and how we can use yoga to get in touch with that and, and know that these little milestones are really important and that men in our lives can help, support, and understand. And it's just a mutual thing and we grow together. So on that note, we're going to introduce our wonderful guest today to talk about the transformations. Um, Kathy, Kathy Louise Broda, who is the owner of Purple Yoga. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to be here today. Well, it's wonderful to have somebody so rich in tune with your body and wanting to share that with people. And you're just saying that, you know, in your yoga studio, you use all of your personal experience into your practice. And let's talk a little bit about that and why you started Purple Yoga. Well, um, I first started yoga when I was 24 years old. and That's I didn't, pretty late, yeah? Kind of. Kind of, yeah. I didn't have any intention of being a yoga teacher. I was just interested in yoga. Uh, I wanted to be healthy. It was kind of the, um, it was instead of going to the gym, I started going to yoga classes. Okay. And from there, I just started doing more and more and ended up doing a small teacher training and then uh, started my own classes. Um, I've been teaching now since 24 and I'm 51 now. Um, and I feel like in my early days, I understood that uh, I just wanted to get healthy. I wanted to be fit. Um, I didn't really know about meditation. I didn't mm. understand any of that. But it was just, I was living in New York City. So I was just kind of slowing my life down a little bit. That's ironic. How do you slow yourself down in New York? You go to a yoga class. <laughs> you go to a yoga class. <laughs> All right. um, and I think as I started to teach, it was kind of just teaching what I, was, what I knew and what I was experiencing. Um, then from New York, I moved to London. And I was teaching in London, again, another big city. Um, I did a pregnancy yoga training with a, a good friend of mine, and she always encouraged me because I was so far away from having kids at that point. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know if I wanted to have kids. Okay. And she said, well, one day maybe you'll start a yoga class for a pregnancy. And so when we moved to Hawaii, he, uh, we moved um, in 2002. Okay. And my husband and I, we met in London, uh -huh. and we wanted to move to Hawaii or New Zealand. He's from New Zealand. All right. And he was he a yogi before you met he him? Was, uh, yeah, we were both practicing okay. together. And uh, we wanted to just start our own yoga studio and oh. kind of have our own programs. Yeah. Um, but why Ashtanga? Um, I started Ashtanga. My first class that I walked into was an Ashtanga class. If people don't and understand the differences in yoga, can you just give a brief description of what Ashtanga means? Ashtanga, it's a, it's a sequence of, um, there's different sequences that we practice. A lot of people uh, might know primary series. There's also second series, and then there's third series and fourth. There's many different okay. series. Um, each series progressively gets more difficult, so it's not that um, it's not like your, our goal is to get to second series or third series. It's really just to practice okay. and start to learn about our bodies. Mm. And through the practice, it's a sequence. So each time we practice, we're practicing the same sequence each time. Okay. So I've been practicing my sequences since I was 24. Okay. And I can say that each stage of my life that I go through, being young, um, being pregnant, recovering from pregnancy, and now heading into menopause, um, wow. each stage the yoga practice has helped me to stay healthy, in tune. Um, sometimes it's been really difficult, especially after having babies. Right, I think that's the uh, hardest one. Yeah. But before we get into yes. the pregnant yoga, mm -hmm. let's start even before that, because a lot of people don't think, oh, as a young teen, you can practice yoga, and you should encourage uh, kids to maybe do that. What yes. is it with you know the teens, especially the uh, girls? You know, they're going through so much self consciousness and yes. so much you know hormonal change and just well, with the hormones. One of the things that happens in puberty is that. Um, kids generally are very loose and limber. Yeah. When they start to hit puberty, for, for girls, when they start to have estrogen being produced in their bodies, the body starts to get really stiff and tight. So the huh. assumption is that they're going to remain limber, and then you kind of switch on estrogen, huh. and all of a sudden the body, the hips, the spine, everything starts to get tight. Wow. And then they're also growing. Right. So everything is getting long. Uh, they often go through these major growth spurts. Yes. And, and the, it's like the the muscles can't keep up with how quickly the body right. is growing. Exactly. Um, so if a girl going going into womanhood can do some 
stretching or yoga, I always, I don't like to say let's do yoga because for girls going into teenage years, they're like, oh, that's like for an old lady or that's old stuff. Right? Right. I don't like want to do that. Old, yeah. Only old people do Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm like, well, you can do some very easy stretching. And, and then if they're doing things like any kind of dance or gymnastics mm. or swimming, there's always some yoga type stretching that they're doing. Um, for me, it's really about giving girls, when they're going through these different phases, kind of empowering their bodies and letting them see that even though their body's changing a lot and they're watching it change really yeah. quickly, um, that they should be comfortable in their bodies and, mm. and really happy and celebrate what they're doing and, and how their body is changing. Do you think yoga helps to give them that confidence to celebrate I their bodies? I think it does. It just, it, it, you, you start to understand where your toes are, where your head is. Okay. And then in between, you start to see the transformation mm -hmm. from being a, a prepubescent mm -hmm. into going into puberty, that a girl's body shifts within mm -hmm. one or two years, there's a huge change. I know. My, my daughter's change. 13, same as yours yes. too, right? Yes. And she woke up and she put all this stuff on her face because she feels like she's breaking out. And I think, you know, if it's stress related, I'm like, mm -hmm. it, it's just part of it's the It's just process. part of it, yes. Yeah. And, I, and I always say it's not that it gets any easier, it's just different. Yeah. And I'm always, I'm telling my, my daughters, and I'm telling my students, I'm like, it's not good or bad, it's just interesting. I always say it's just interesting because it's not like you get through puberty and then everything's great right. because you're constantly God, no. shifting you know in your 20s <laughs> yeah and things are shifting and then in your 30s things shift so yeah. there's always there's always some discomfort so there's always little mini transformations within yes. the big transformation yes and then if you can look back yeah and think okay where was i five years ago yeah um my my one of my twins was saying the other night she goes i don't want to go through puberty i don't want to change <laughs> yeah, and i'm like right right you can't it's just happening yeah, yeah. it's just but happening then at the same time they want to grow up yeah like, they want to be an adult i yes. want to be able to wear heels and yes. go out and party and wear makeup. <laughs> yeah yeah and all of that but i'm always like well yeah and you have to slowly it's like slowly getting comfortable with everything, yeah. and that, but it's difficult. It's it very is. difficult. I think puberty is probably the most yeah. awkward time for girls more than boys. Yes. Yeah. 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 And especially now with social media, there's so much attention on how we how perceive ourselves. Yes. Yeah. So yoga yeah. is something definitely to do. Yes. Um, are there any other areas in puberty before we move on? Because I want to get through. I know it sounds <laughs> crazy, but we yes, want to touch on yeah. the life of a woman. Yeah. Um, I think that. One of the things is the early sharing, and I think it's I'm I'm I keep reading and hearing things um, about how it's how important it is that we share our stories with our daughters. Yes. And if you don't have children, then share it with. Um, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and the uh, talk, speaker was saying, talk to you might end up being a mentor for a friend's child. Hmm. So yeah. I can't, I'm not comfortable talking with my daughter, right. but you can talk to her. Right. Right. And so I'm always just encouraging mothers. It's like, and even from when you're a baby, yeah. like talk to your babies, talk to your children, yeah. communicate. And it's a lost art because yes. nowadays everyone's so consumed with, again, social media, yes. or they're getting, um, you know, facts or non-facts from their friends. Yes. And they don't have the maturity to see beyond certain yes. situations. Yes. One of the things we do at home is we have dinner every night together. Yeah. And I'm like, put the devices away, oh, turn absolutely. everything off. And every night Thanks. we download what's happened, you know, what happened at school, how are you yeah, feeling, yeah. what are you going through, um, oh, the aches and pains, whatever it is. And through that communication, then we can have the personal conversations with my daughters mm. where I talk about what's going to happen when they have a menstrual cycle, what happens when their, you know, the body starts to develop, yeah. what are and we going to do? You know, I didn't do? even get to do that talk with my daughter because her period came when she was with a sleepover with her friends and her oh, friends told her everything. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, that's okay, I got to do this. Yes, and it was yeah. like, bam, it was gone. Yeah. yeah. I've <laughs> been doing it with my daughters. Um, I started kind of when they were 10 uh -huh. with my oldest daughter. Yeah. She's 13 now. I started when she was about 10 years old because I was developing this women's workshop. Okay. And she had questions. Yeah. So I said, well, let's look at the charts. Let's look at the pictures. Right, Let's right. look at it. And I, I go from a very Like real pictures or charts or graphs? Because it's different. Gra at school, no, they do I, like... No, I actually get out the anatomy books. Okay. And I'm like, let's look at, let's <laughs> look at the anatomy of a woman right. and all the parts. Right. And name the parts properly. 
Wow, I and, feel like Miss Sex Ed. Oh, I know. But, but I'm like, Total. why not? Because otherwise, it's this whole kind of like thing that we don't talk about. Yeah. And for me, my mom did the best that she could, uh -huh. but I didn't get any information. That's interesting. So and I'm the schools going, only skim over things that you're right. supposed to know. Yes. And and uh, there again through this podcast, yeah. I was listening to the, this woman was saying she goes, we're basically only giving our girls the dangers, like be careful about yes, this, yes. the bad things. Yeah. And I'm like, there's this whole good side yeah. about our bodies Absolutely. that we should be comfortable with. Right. And I was watching your uh, interview last week about oh, the I'm goddess. Celebrating. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, we need to empower. We need to feel empowered by these changes yes, as opposed to about ashamed that. by right. ashamed. Right. And I think through the yoga practice and through my yoga teaching, that's the thing that I want to give to women okay. through all these different stages and all these transitions and transformations that it's like, it's amazing what we do. And you're opening up. I mean, there's the literal opening up because yoga opens up your body. Yes. But it opens up your heart. And then, you know, no kidding. It yes. sounds kind of like cliche, but yes. it does. It, it does. opens up your your mind, your concept of life. Yes. Yes. And then also the acceptance. Yeah. That uh, yoga is about change and then about accepting the change, uh -huh. not fighting it. Sometimes we fight it. And when you fight it, it's even harder. Give a good example in terms of yoga you know like if there's a position that you're stuck and you feel stuck but you have to allow yourself to any get, kind yeah, so into any it? kind of twist uh, okay. right some people will get into a twist and then they're fighting it yeah. so instead of actually relaxing yeah. and finding their finding their core strength and breathing yeah so we, if we twist yeah right if you think about twisting yeah um we can, my hips are going to stay in one place yeah. and my my torso is going to move right. that way right right so if i fight it and my abs are too strong and my shoulders are really tight and I'm not breathing, it's just going to be, I end up fighting it. So I can just push it. myself yeah. to do it, but that's or not really if I just think, it. okay, I'm going to relax, mm. and then I'm going to move into my center and my core, I'm going to move from where my uterus is, where our it's power the is, That's right. then I will be able to twist more deeply, which then I feel the twist up to my heart center, my spine, my shoulder, my neck, and then there is some relief. So sometimes in yoga we're fighting, and if you just relax, it's not get floppy. No, there's but a difference. It's, there's yeah. a difference between relaxing, and the relaxing is often with the breath, and then just with telling ourselves it's okay to be here. Hmm. And it's okay. Sometimes it's scary to go deeper. Hmm. So that we're just on the edge oh, yeah. of, I don't know if I want to go deeper because it's a scary place. Like in life, right? Yes. You don't know that yes. terrain and you don't want to go there. Or yeah. you look at it or you go over the edge and you're like, oh, yeah, <gasps> it's I too fell frightening. That time. I'm not gonna, and I don't want to yeah. do it. Yeah. 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 So it's, and, and through the yoga practice, we're just, we constantly are changing the edge. Yes. So the edge just goes a little, and that I like happens, that. I was thinking, what happens with children. Mm. Um, we have that circle of, of uh, safety, yeah. But each stage of the way, they're pushing. You're up pushing the, that yeah. boundary. So we have to keep opening the fence. So and it's flexible. It a, this, yes. this fence. So we have to keep opening it. It's not like Trump's stupid concrete fence. No, we're talking a flexible, malleable, big, big beautiful, yeah. organic yes. Yes. fence. And then through that, if I'm saying these are the boundaries, yeah. or this is the asana, yeah. and then it's like, oh, you get good at that, okay, let's open up the door a little bit and include something else, then it gets bigger. Ah. Now with girls, and I think with children in general, and then as we become adults, if we know where the boundary is, we'll push up against it. Oh. And then it's like, okay, let's change the boundary. Again, let's change. It's not good or bad, and you're not doing a bad job. Right. We're just gonna make it a little bit more. So then that becomes comfortable. And it becomes empowering because you yes. know you're pushing yourself a little yes. further. Yes. And you're and not that, settling. So it. then if we go from girls into young woman and then into pregnancy, the change again is it, the transformation is huge. Yeah. From being Literally not stretching your belly. Yes. Oh my yeah. God. And accepting yeah. that this is my belly's out here now. And then all of a sudden, and then you the have a baby. tire oh. afterwards oh that yes. you got to deal with and yes. confronting your new body yes. and how you change that. Right. So many things to talk about. So, okay, we just hit like the tip of the iceberg know, here. Like yeah, a lot. So, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to come back and we're going to start talking about that pregnancy transformation and how that takes us through life and how it matures us and enriches us and goes further into menopause which is another phase so don't go away lots of stuff to talk about Aloha this is Kelihi Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. movers and shakers and great ideas join us we'll see you then Aloha Aloha, my name is John Waihe, and I used to be a part of 
all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to talk story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Wahee. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Hello, continuing on Quack Talk, talking about the beautiful transformations between puberty through pregnancy to menopause. Now, we touched on a lot of puberty issues, and so we're going to go right into this pregnancy uh, concept and how that, wow, that, that, that's like the biggest transformation for a woman ever. Yeah, Kathy? Yes. Would you say? I would say it is, okay. yes. Yeah. And, and how do we embrace that through yoga? And it's so unexpected sometimes. Uh. The change is unexpected. Uh, and I think sometimes we fight it. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's a point where you just have to go, oh my gosh, I'm really pregnant mm -hmm. and I'm going to have a baby. Mm -hmm. And uh, the shift usually happens about six, seven months where all of a sudden the reality hits of mm -hmm. in a few months or in a month and a half, there's going to be a baby outside yeah. of me and what's going to happen and I don't know what's going to happen and it's a big, huge question. Um, in my pregnancy yoga classes, what we're mainly gearing women or teaching women is how to labor well. That's one of the things. This is the mom and baby class that mm -hmm. um, I teach after pregnancy. That's great. That it's fun. You have the babies with you. You have the baby, so yeah. And we try and special. do we try and do some yoga, mom yoga, and then we get the babies involved. We do a lot of yoga. So you use the babies to lift them oh, up. Oh, we to lift do. them up. We swing them around. Oh, I like that. So yeah, cute. Uh, that this picture is um, one of the hardest things to do because your baby just gets heavier and heavier and heavier. <laughs> that's great. But that's real. Up, yeah. So I'm always telling women, you don't need to go to the gym. Oh no. You just yeah, need you to lift your baby biceps. up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you do a specific class on pregnancy yoga, which I find yes. is interesting and yes. very tailored. Yes. Um, how, and how does that work? Um, we, I think the from my experience of, of having a singleton, which I had a single baby, and then I had twins. Right. My second round, I had, tw I had twins. You should have a pregnancy class just for twins. I mean, there's, there's, just not, so that, there's not that oh, many. Okay. <laughs> there's not that, not that many. All right. But they do come in. All right. Um, and the yoga practice helped me in my labor understanding how to breathe, yeah, understanding true. the transitions of a contraction, of how a contraction rises and how a contraction falls. It's no different than an asana. We do a posture for a minute or two minutes and then we relax and it falls down. Mm -hmm. So our whole teaching is really about understanding that rise and fall, which then I always tell the women, if you understand that rise and fall in a yoga practice, uh -huh. you're going to understand it when you go into labor, that a contraction rises, it falls. When it starts to fall or when it starts to release, you breathe, you relax your eyes and your nose, your jaw, you breathe into your back. Mm -hmm. So we're teaching women this mantra, breathe, yeah. relax your eyes, nose, and jaw, breathe into your back, take a deep inhale. Right. So that's, we're just teaching women that. And mm. that's the overriding thing that women say after they have their babies, is that they were able to breathe. They had that mantra in my head. Right. You know, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about what the teachers say. <laughs> um, it continues on after you have your baby. But well, what about the psychological effects? I mean, a lot of times you think of the physical transformations, but more deeply is yes, all that. Yes, the, the change is you're going from a single person into becoming a mother. Mm -hmm. And that is, it's often a difficult transition because we're, um, we either have a career, um, yeah. we're happy. Right. Being and we're doing things our for own. ourselves. We're doing things on ourselves, and all of a sudden you have you to have take to, yeah. somebody else into consideration. Right. It is a it is a big change. I think it's like almost the when I had my daughter Coco, the moment she left my body, I understood why I was here. Hmm. That I kind of pushed her out, and I remember just thinking, oh, I know why I'm here. Right. I understand. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I can't no, say what it is. Yeah, no, but it was so just that special. kind of meaning of life for yeah. that. It was like an initiation for yes. me of like, okay, yes. now I am in this next phase of my life. Right. And I get to do mothering. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of women who don't have children. They're still going through that transition and that change in this middle section of our life. Yeah. It's one of the things I talk about in the women's workshop that even if you don't have kids, in this middle section between our, our uh, 30s and 40s, we, are, we become householders. A householder is a person who has a house, starts to have comfortable things, right, okay. you buy your car, yeah, right. you Life's have your job, stable. everything becomes more settled, mm -hmm, more stable. Mm -hmm. um, so whether you become a mom or not, it's that we have this transition into this middle section of our life where 
again, we're having to relearn our body. Mm. And then there's that part of being able to look back and go, oh, yeah. that 20 something body's gone. Exactly. I was just going to say, you know, the transformation is so subtle for a long period of time mm -hmm. that you don't think about it. And then one day you wake up and go, oh my God, <gasps> what are these? Right I, where did that come? You know, yes. and, and it's yes. scary. Yes. And your whole I body goes overnight. I walk around and I'm like, I still feel 24 right, inside. Right. I feel fabulous. And then, and you then go, I look in the mirror and I'm like, <gasps> shoot. Oh, gosh. Oh. I'm not. <laughs> it's so depressing. But inside, I'm like, no. I right. feel it inside, and the yoga practice and doing yoga for all these years makes me upright. I'm lifted. Yeah, yeah. I've got my core strength. Yeah. I feel great. Can we talk so, about the bandhas a little bit? Yes. Because yes. I feel like after pregnancy, that's like one of the biggest things internally that changes. And I know in yoga, yes. you, ashtanga especially, is yes. you need to... How do you explain that to people? How do so we, our bandhas are our, our internal body locks. And we have mula bandha, which is the root lock. And uh, I always kind of joke that you don't have to have a baby to understand mula bandha, but if you get pregnant and you have a vaginal delivery, yeah. you're going to understand mula. Because <laughs> right. there are kegels. Right, right, um, right. So the kegel muscles are the muscles that we use to hold the, the pelvic floor muscles from the pubic bone to your tailbone. Right, right, right. So from there, then we go to uddiyana. Uddiyana is the abdominal lock. So it's a little higher it's up? It's higher up, yeah. And um, uddiyana and mula bandha, the two kind of come together. Now, interestingly for women, the, that connection happens at our inner uterus. And in yoga, we talk about uh, harnessing the fire or yeah. getting Agni. Yeah, yeah. Agni is at that spot. So for women, when you have a menstrual cycle, you get really hot. Oh, okay. Uh, when you have a baby, they talk about a bun in the oven. Right, that it's right, hot, right, right, right. When you go through menopause or you have perimenopause, oh, you've got the heat. Right. So we have, as naturally as women, we have a lot of heat in that core strength. Okay. So in Ashtanga, we're always talking about finding the root lock and the abdominal lock in order to find our core strength. Now, it's kind of a, it's an energetic place. In yes. the beginning, it's muscular, where you are literally lifting your muscles. Right. But then after that, it becomes the energy of what you're lifting and into. You but know? the problem with pregnancies, or not pregnancies, maybe just age, is that it loosens over time, yes. no matter what you do to try. In fact, yes. I remember in Hong Kong, I interviewed somebody about sex toys, and she gave me this as a gift, which I've never used. An egg? They're like these weights, yeah. Yes. And you yes. stick it in, and you walk around. It's yes. supposed to create yes. strength. Yes. Yes, and that we don't we don't do that. <laughs> what do you, what, what's a natural way to do it then? It's just of holding squeeze, so, of squeezing the vaginal muscles. Okay, that is literally from the outside moving through the vagina. And but for me, it's a muscle. I look at it as a muscle. Yeah, and we're going from the outside to inside. Yeah. Now, if you do those, I call it the middle. I was like, is my, it the kegels? It's the same it's, as it's exactly okay, the kegels. You're just holding but in for from my experience. Yeah. When I'm lifting, I feel now yeah. I'm lifting all the way up inside, and I kind of hit the cervix. Oh. I go into the uterus. I can feel that. Wow! And then it connects to my navel. Dang, you're connected. I feel really connected <laughs> right now. <laughs> I always try. Sometimes I'm driving, I go, okay, I'm going to hold it in. I'm going to yeah. try to tighten it. One but of the things like, I talk in my pregnancy class is I say, uh, and this is something one of my students said a long time ago. She said, every time I go to a stoplight, I lift my kegels. That's great. Yeah? Yeah. So They between, say you're waiting at the bus stop anywhere. Lift your kegels. Hold right. it hold in. Hold it in. Breathe. Yeah. Do you, how many and times do you count to like hold it before I you release know, it? You just try and hold it until you stop holding okay. until you can't okay. remember that you're holding it. Okay. And I think because I do yoga, yeah. I kind of I'm holding it all the time. I have to think about letting it go. Oh wow! So I think that's just so a you're life. a tight woman. <laughs> I try. <laughs> Should I ask your husband? I try. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk to him about that. Okay, because you know, dang, pregnancies do it loosens you, and this is yes. a sad fact, especially when you get older and you want to still feel young, like you said. Yeah. But there are things in your body that are just loosening up. Yeah. So let's talk about menopause in our short time left. Yeah. What so, do we do to prepare for that big transformation? So menopause, it's I think for for me it was tracking my periods. Okay. Um, that was really important for me of of watching what my monthly cycle was. Um, I started to see things going a little bit amiss around the age of forty. Right after I had my twins, huh. my periods started to be just a little just bit a little, irregular. Mm -hmm. um, at forty five, it definitely started to change. And I just noticed things like my skin was drying out. Yeah. Uh, there were days in my yoga practice where I was really stiff. Huh. And I couldn't, you know, one day I'd be great, the next day I couldn't touch my toes. That is, again, hormones in our body fluctuating greatly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes my menstrual cycle was really heavy. Um, 
and sometimes, again, I was missing cycles. But you know, all so, this information you're giving now is fairly relevant for our partners who live with us yes. because they need to know our transformations and understand why sometimes we do feel uptight or warm or overheated yes. or... I was talking to a student recently and saying, because she, we were talking about the, the hot flashes, yeah. we're feeling all of a sudden this warmth and it's so, it comes on all of a sudden, there's yeah. no warning. Right. All of a sudden one day you're hot. I remember exactly the first hot flash I had. I was sitting, I was like, why are my shins sweating? Why, you know, my, shin, my shins were, were, I was like, I'm <laughs> glistening right now. Why? Right, right. Um, and I, I told her, I said, you need to talk to your husband. You need to talk to your partner. So I'm always telling women, talk to your partners about this because it's random. Yeah. And one day I'm really happy, one day I'm not. I also talk to my daughters about it. Yeah. Because my daughters are going into... Uh, into uh, their fertile years. Right. I'm exiting. Too, isn't that and interesting? And so I told my older daughter, I said, we're kind of doing the same thing. Yes. You're just at the beginning. I'm at the end. Now, it doesn't mean at the end when I stop my menstrual cycles, that's the end. But, but that process. It's like, but the process is actually very similar. It's funny you say that because I took my daughter to her pediatrician to get her women's checkup. Mm -hmm. And she's saying that your period's going to be very irregular for the first year or so. And I was joking. Hey, that's funny. Me too. Yes. It's like, <laughs> we're, yeah, yes. We're on the similar we're ground, on, but yes, on, on yeah. the other way. Yes. And I tell them also, um, and I tell my husband, that I can feel when something's not right. I can start to feel when I'm just getting agitated or I get angry really fast. It's like that fire inside right. comes up. And I always say, just like hang in there with yeah, me. Yeah. Um, be nice to me. Right. I tell my daughter, so like, just be nice to me. Just be nice today because yeah. I, can, I can feel it. And then sometimes also like when I go through a menstrual cycle, I haven't had one for a while now, uh -huh. but once I go through that cycle, it's like that feeling of like, okay, I'm clear. Everything's, everything's lifted. I feel good. And... I'm always, though, communicating with my kids um, and with my husband because yeah. that's it's so important that it's like everybody has to hang in with us. Right. You're on the same we, boat. We, you we need do. to understand yes. each other's And then I have, I have some Ashtanga students who now have said that once you're through it in yeah. their 60s and 70s, everything is wonderful. Yeah. Kathy, you know, we have less than one minute to go. I okay. really want you to be able to promote this uh, upcoming workshop. Yes. Yes. What is so that all about? So um, the Yoga for Women's workshop that I'll be teaching in a couple weekends, I basically take everybody through how we enter um, womanhood mm -hmm. and then how we exit. Mm -hmm. And I talk about our creativity. Um, we do some yoga. The last session is really nice. I had a friend of mine, uh, Emma Mitchell who, Mitchell, who will be doing a crystal bowl meditation, cool. which is really lovely. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a it's a chance for women to get together. Sometimes we share, sometimes we don't. I have a lot to say, so it's come. like come, yeah, yeah, come, and and it's like really learning about ourselves and then being able to then share that with other women. Exactly. There you go. That's it. Please enjoy um, this. You know, Kathy, I've just enriched myself so much from just the engaging so conversation much. with you. And I hope you did too. Enjoy your bodies, enjoy your partners, enjoy your life. So thank you for tuning in today and we'll see you next time. Bye.